welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is my hope that this message and this broadcast that you're about to hear will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God, it matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Without further delay, let's welcome our speaker this morning, Minister Sterling Jones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To the viewers today and to my brothers and sisters in Christ, I bring greetings to you in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I like movies, and I imagine you do too. There's a movie that they play often, Shawshank Redemption. Um, Morgan Freeman, one of my actors that I like to, to watch. Um, he plays in Shawshank Re Redemption, and he plays a character named Red. Now, Red is in, in prison, and Red committed a careless act of violence that caused him to be in prison. He's, he's been in prison in the movie 40 years. And Red is finally released after 40 years in prison. He's happy. He's excited for his freedom. However, he can't free himself from the habit of asking for permission each time he wishes to do something. He becomes institutionalized, if you will. This newfound life scares Red. He is fearful because he's grown accustomed to the structure behind bars. Yeah. Somehow, prison has become safe for Red. Imagine that. He didn't have to exercise his own decision making. Someone else did it for him, right? On the outside, he faces a prospect more terrifying to him than incarceration. Freedom. Red confesses as he contemplates in the movie, ways to break his parole and to return to the security of his prison cell. He sums up his dilemma in one line. It's a terrible thing to live in fear. The fear that character Red speaks about is not how we should fear the Lord. When the Bible speaks of fearing the Lord, it's talking about a fear of God that brings holy awe or reverence to God and his laws. A real love rooted in his divine character. Such a person who loves the Lord and fears the Lord shuns everything that offends God, inclining them to aim or strive for perfect obedience. The type of fear Red experience, however, it speaks of in the Webster's Dictionary as a painful emotion caused by an expectation of evil, an apprehension of impending danger, real or imagined. Mm -hmm. Fear is an uneasiness of mind in this, in this state. The thought of a future evil or tragedy that might happen to us. Keep in mind, it can be real or imagined. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You're gonna to respond to it. Mm -hmm. One could also say, Red experience a fear of change or fear of the unknown. Fear. Everyone has a run in, run in with fear every now and then. Mm -hmm. We're living in fear, fearful times. Mm -hmm. Fear of loneliness, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of not measuring up or being inadequate, fear of sickness, <coughs> especially in these times that we're living in today. Fear comes at us from a variety of directions. And fear is a major weapon of the devil, our enemy. But really, let me say this. I didn't come here to focus on the various fears, the weapons of the devil, how he uses them to attack us. I came to proclaim to you today that you don't have to live in fear. We overcome fear by having faith in God. We overcome by obeying the word of God. Right. Fear breathes an atmosphere that is toxic, toxic to a victorious life. The devil wants you to be defeated, but God wants you to be victorious. Right. Our focus verse comes from Isaiah 41 and 10, which says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. 
I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. In this scripture, the Lord is speaking to Israel, his chosen people, who are fearing an impending invasion by the Babylonian Empire, led by King Cyrus. So the Lord comforts them. He provides commandments and he delivers promises to his people. And the same commandments and promises the Lord spoke then, they're true today. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, these same commandments and promises are available to you. Now, this is an important comment. We're going to come back to it. Now, the scripture provides five points that I'd like us to, to consider. You do not have to live in fear because God is with us. He is yeah. present, right? Yeah. The first point is a commandment combined with a promise. In the scripture, the type of fear the Lord commands us to fight against is a spirit of fear. The Bible tells us that he did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us power, right? Yeah. Yeah. Love and a yeah. sound mind. Yeah. But this spirit of fear seeks to make us powerless. Mm -hmm. It pushes us to make bad, irrational decisions. Sure. Do you know you, there is something called the fear response? Mm -hmm. That you, your body, if, if you believe that you're, in, you're in, fear, in a fearful situation, you break out sweat, mm -hmm. you tremble. Your body responds physically because it thinks it's in danger. Uh -huh. And then it affects how you think. It's the fight or flight syndrome. Yeah. Now, on the heels of God's commandment here, the Lord attaches a promise. He says, I am with thee. There is something about the presence of God that yeah. eases our fears yeah. and calms yeah. our pain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes. Right? Yes. In his presence, there is comfort. Yes. Right? Right. Romans 8 and 31 says, what shall we say to these things? Yeah. If God be for us, Ooh. finish it, y'all. Who can get this? Yes. With, God, with God on our side, we have no reason to fear. Mm -hmm. He spoke into the darkness of the void and created the heavens and the earth. Yes. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. He is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Yes, Since the Lord is present with us, we should pray continuously. And what I mean is fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't, you're not in someone's presence and you don't speak. You're not in someone's presence and, and eventually try to get to know them. Mm -hmm. Prayer is getting to know the Lord. Prayer is having an intimate conversation. Tell them your thoughts. Tell them your needs. Tell them what you're going through. He wants to know. He wants to be involved. He doesn't want to simply observe us because God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present. But when you are a child of God, when you are a follower of Jesus Christ, he wants to be more than an observer. He wants to be involved in your life. Fellowship with him. As you fellowship with him, it makes it easier for you to trust God. Makes it, makes it easier for you to uh, increase your faith. Yeah. Your faith will grow as you trust him. Yeah. And faith overpowers fear. Yeah. They cannot coexist in the same yeah. space. He is with us. He is with us, I say. The Lord is with us everywhere we go. He's in our homes with us. He's on our jobs with us. He's with us as we travel to and fro. He's with us in the good times. Yeah. And he's with us in the bad times. Yeah. David said it like this in Psalms 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, mm -hmm. for thou art with me. Right. So God is going to be with you mm -hmm. no matter what you're going through. Yeah. Be, be not dismayed is the second point. Mm -hmm. Because I am your God. Mm -hmm. Again, a commandment combined with a promise. The Lord is telling us to not be discouraged. Don't be intimidated by the storms of life. Don't be intimidated by the weapons the devil throws at you. Yeah. First Peter 5 and 7 instructs us to cast our cares upon him yes. because he cares for us. Yeah. God cares about the situations in our lives. All our fears, all our concerns, all our worries, we need to turn them over to him. Let the Lord fight your battle. Yeah, yeah. When we heed the commandments of God, 
he responds to our faith and trust in him by delivering more promise. Look at the scripture. The next one says, I will strengthen you. Is there a better source of strength than the Lord? No, not one. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. When I am weak, the Lord will make me strong. There have been times in my life when I felt strong and ready to face the trials of life. But there have been so many times when I felt weak and unprepared and wanted to run and hide in the corner because I didn't want to deal with what the devil was throwing my way. But then the grace of, the, of God kicks in and strengthens me and empowers us to carry on. Philippians 4 and 13 reminds me that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Our fourth point says, I will help you. I will help you. Hebrews 4 and 16 tells us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Jesus and his disciples went on a little boat ride, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And on the boat ride, Jesus fell asleep as they went across the waters. Yeah. While Jesus slept, a raging storm came, and his disciples feared for their lives. They pleaded for help, and he arose. And he rebuked the storm, bringing peace to the winds and the sea. God will not let the storms of life utterly destroy you. Remember, he is with you. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Our fifth point is this. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a statement. The Lord's righteousness speaks of his faithfulness. And his right hand speaks of his power. So the Lord will secure you in the power of his faithfulness. In other words... God is going to secure you, and he is true to his word. Yeah. If he says he's going to uphold you, yeah. he will do just that. Right. There is nothing that will not allow God to fulfill his word. Yeah. He doesn't speak a word, and it goes out void. It's going to accomplish that which pleases him, right. and it, it does in, intentionally what he wants it to. I don't know about you, but I need the Lord to remind me all the time to fear not. The Bible says the, the, the phrase fear not or be not afraid is found over a hundred times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most repeated commandments. Mm -hmm. yeah. When fear rises up during storms of life, take comfort in knowing that God is with you. Mm -hmm. Him telling us over and over again to fear not or be, afraid, or be afraid is him reassuring us that he's there. Yeah. Yeah. When fear comes to discourage or intimidate you, when fear comes to overtake you, the only way to have victory is to make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ is your God. I told you we're going to come back to that point. Um, is he your God? Mm -hmm. Do you want him to be your God? Mm -hmm. Make sure you know him. The time is short and the day is late. Make sure you know the Lord. Yes. Know him in an intimate way. Not just as a passerby or as a casual acquaintance. Invite him into your life. He will strengthen you when you're weak. He will help you in your times of trouble. He will secure you with the power of his faithfulness. There is no doubt that the Lord will fulfill his promises to you. We overcome our fears through obedience and trust in God. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. I truly hope the word you just heard was a blessing to your soul. If you are living in fear, fear not because God is with you. Take the time to commune with God, to get to know God intimately. Trust God. Put, place your faith in God. As the minister said, faith overcomes fear. If you are looking to learn more about God, come visit us. Information can be found at our church website at hodchurch.com. If you would like someone to talk to or need prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week for another inspired message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters. <laughs>